Hi, this is Janae from The Itch to Stitch. In this video, I will explain the difference between using a BX file and opening a design file for an applique letter in Embrilliant software. If the applique alphabet you have purchased includes BX files in addition to all the machine formats, then once you've downloaded the zip to your hard drive and extracted the files from the zip, you will find all the design files sorted in folders by machine format, and that first folder will include the BX files. Now, if you're just going to stitch one single letter, you technically don't need to use software. You could just go to the folder for your format. For example, I have a brother machine, so I would go to the PES format, and if I wanted to stitch the 4-inch letter E, I would just select that design file, transfer it to my embroidery machine, and stitch it out. But I like to view designs and software first before embroidering them, so let's go back to that folder, and instead, let's look inside the folder that ends with BX. All right, we'll see there's a BX file for each of the sizes of the applique font that we include. Again, I'm on a Mac, so I'm in Finder, but if you are on a PC, you need to be in um, Windows File Explorer. And once you have already extracted the files from the zip, you can just double click a BX file and it will pull up in Brilliance and install that size of the font. Or the other option is to just select them all. So let me select the rest of them by holding my shift key as I select those and drag and drop them into place and it will install all the rest of the sizes so that now when I create a lettering object if I go over here to my font options box I can scroll down to teen girls and my applique alphabet will appear alongside all of the embroidery fonts I already had installed so let's choose that four inch size now remember the default text in a lettering object is ABC, so it's pulling in three different applique designs. If I want just the E, I will type a capital E and click set. Then I can center this in my hoop. Now how do I know this is an applique design? If you click on the color tab, you will see that there are three color stops. If I were going to stitch this out at my machine, I would probably only load blue thread and use blue thread for all three steps. But it's important that the embroidery design file has three steps so that your machine will stop. It will stitch the first color stop, which is the placement stitch. It'll pause, allowing for a thread change. You don't have to change threads. You just need to lay down your applique fabric, and then it will stitch the tack down stitch that secures the fabric to the base item. It will pause to allow for a thread change, but again, what you're going to do with that step is trim around the letter and then hit start for the third color stop, and that will be the satin stitches that will go around the outside edge of your fabric, and the thread color you choose is what you want to coordinate with the fabric that you've chosen. The advantage of using BX files for applique letters in Embrilliant software is Let's say I'm going to work on a project for Emily and I've got my 5 by 7 hoop selected and maybe I think, well, let's see if I can go up to the 5 inch size. That'll fit. Maybe even the 6 inch size. And that looks like it's going to fit very nicely. So if I choose this for um, Emily and then I need to also consider her sister, Mary, and I click set. Oh, in this case, the M is too big for my 5 by 7 hoop. So I probably ought to stick with the 5 inch size for both girls. Okay, so I can quickly preview the letter in my hoop and determine which size I want to use. Maybe I decide to completely change fonts altogether. That's another advantage to the BX files is I can choose something else. So let's try the box font, five inch size. Okay, now this applique is a little bit different. I've seen two different color satin stitches. If I click on the color tab here, I see this design has several stops and that's because it's a two fabric applique. So it's got the placement and tack down stitches twice because there's two fabrics. Now the disadvantage of using a BX file is that lettering objects do not have that little triangle to expand. If you're running in Brilliance in Express mode, this is all you get, okay? You get access to the BX files and you can save your designs. But if you own one of the Brilliance products, so say you own Essentials, you may be wondering where that triangle is. And that's only an option for design files. So instead of using the BX files, you may prefer to open the design file. So let me go to box font PS. I want the five inch M. In this case, I'm opening the design file and now I have the arrow to expand the object. 
And so I can see what's happening in each step. In fact, if I highlight it, if under view I have ghost mode selected, what that's going to allow me to do is when I select a portion of a design, it darkens that line so I can see underneath the satin stitches. And that first step is a placement stitch for the box. And then the second one is the tack down, then placement and tack down for the M. And then I have my satin stitch steps. So this is the advantage of using a design file instead of a BX file is being able to expand the object and see what's going on underneath the scenes. Again, that is available to those who own Essentials. Either way, if you are using a BX file, um, which you can do in Embrilliance Express for free, or you're opening a design file in Essentials, you can further customize your applique letter by adding additional lettering objects. And we're going to share tips for that in our next video.